Hall and Mr. Yannick and your Dundago Marching Conquistadors. This season has been a season of adversity for the Claremont High Wolfpack, starting, starting the year off 0-8 and looking like this season was going nowhere. But here we are at Don Lugo High School where Claremont has a chance to share a league championship this year. No one could have expected this, but here we are. And welcome to Claremont High School Football on the Claremont High Network. My name is Luke Roy and I'm joined by Mr. Frank Ramirez. How are you doing tonight, Frank? I'm doing great. Thank you very much. I think you're uh, you hit it right on the head because at the end of at the beginning of the season when you're starting off the the you know your practices and and uh, preseason games that's all you could really ask for is to be in it the last game of the season. Yes, and they are in it now. There was a little bit of confusion on our part last week. We weren't fully sure how it all worked, but we have it down. So let's go over it real quick. All Claremont needs to do is win tonight, and they will share league and be going to CIF. But it's unprecedented, lose, unprecedented oh. in a league in a year that it's been so uh, you know on a downward trend uh, scoreboard wise. It's incredible that we're here doing this and can have a chance to to move on tonight. But if they lose, they are out of both of those, and their season will end here on a away field. Now we were talking about adversity, and I think it's time that we need to discuss what happened last week. And after last week, both Coach Heil and Claremont agreed to part ways through his coaching. So taking over tonight will be his son, Anthony Heil, who will be the interim head coach for the rest of this year. And, I mean, from the, from the team, from the program, and especially from us, I feel like we have to give a big thank you to Coach Heil and all the service that he's had here at Claremont. I mean, he's been one of the most long-tenured coaches in Claremont history, and he's delivered a lot of winning to this program. We've seen it the last couple of years, so his absence is going to be missed, but yeah. his son is able to control the team well. I'm sure he is, so I feel the odds for this game are still going good. Yeah, absolutely, and this is one of those opportunities where the kids and the players just focus on the game. I mean, there's a lot of things going on, you know, behind the scenes, but uh, overall, I think... Uh, Coach Anthony Heil will get them kind of uh, pointing in the right direction so that they can just focus on tonight and uh, figure out what we can do after next week if we do have a next week. Well, I'm sure the coaches are saying, do not look ahead. You do not have the option to look ahead right now. But let's talk a little bit about Don Lugo. Now, there are good offenses. There are great offenses. And then there's Don Lugo. This offense is incredible, to say the least. I mean... 
their quarterback. I was looking it up, and you know, sometimes people put in the wrong stats. You know, it's high school football, and it said he had 37 passing touchdowns, and I really couldn't believe it. Yeah. But he indeed does. That's Caleb Pacheco, and he is led by an elite receiving core too. This team is a pass-heavy team. We don't see that a whole lot in high school football. It's a lot of run. It's a lot of defense-minded teams, but. Here's the opportunity for them to face this team. Well, their defense has not been great this year. That's all you can say. I mean, the three and six record is still. I mean, you know, it, it's kind of similar to our season. But mm -hmm. like you said, they have the pass attack that they can definitely employ at will. And, and the the packs defensive backs are definitely going to be tested tonight. And Claremont is kicking it off tonight. Carter Montgomery. Also, it's a Thursday today. A little yes. bit weird, but. Here we go. And this game is kicking off here on the Claremont High Network. Little short kick, and it's bobbled out of his hand, but it looks like he still recovers it. The receiver couldn't get his hands on it, but was able to get it, and Don, and Don Lugo will be coming out onto the field at the 32-yard line. And the Wolfpack today are going to have to take advantage of, of things like that, you know, uh, turnovers, opportunities that uh, the other team will make mistakes. Obviously, with a three and six record, it's you know it's one of those things that that just happens, and the Wolfpack's going to have to take advantage of those positions when they happen. Now it's going to be a loud night here. It's Senior Night and Pink Out for the Conquistador. Oh, excuse me, I know I'm going to pronounce that wrong about ten times tonight. It's a hard name. And here it is, first and ten for the Don Lugo offense, looking to get started early. And there's the snap. There's the handoff straight down the middle, and the defense doesn't let that get far. That's about a one-yard gain. There will be second and nine for your Wolfpack defense. Not exactly what I thought they would start. I thought oh, they would no, start. Oh, no, I throwing. thought they were going to air it out for his play. Now, Claremont's offense hasn't been great this year, but their defense, my, oh, my, they have been great, especially come league. And there's the snap. A little bit of a low snap there. Pacheco scrambles out, tries to find it, and he does. Looks like he might have just got the first down there right at the line, and they give it to him. It will be first and ten for Don Lugo. And, again, there we go. You saw it. He can pass very well. And here we go. It's first down. You have three men at the bottom of your screen. A little bit of pressure there by the Wolfpack, doesn't see it. Looking out, throws it to his running back, number 22, and he catches it, and looks like he may have just got it. I think the ref's going to give it to him. Oh, look, he, he battled for that last yard. Can't tell. They still haven't made the like, call, but it looks, from the mark, it looks like they're... Looks like they're about inches short here. Oh, yeah, it'll be calling it, he's second. Calling it first down. Oh, there it is, first down for Don Lugo. Now, you see, they are extending the play, so Claremont is going to have to get pressure on Don Lugo to stop this offense. Yeah, linebackers are going to have to be disciplined on the outside as they hold on to the ball. And he can, I'm not sure if he runs. I think he, he's a passer. I mean, there looked like some of the players jumped on that false count, but they didn't get far enough for it to no. be a penalty. I saw a little bit of looking at the refs, and there's a throw over the middle, oh. and it's oh, almost intercepted there. That was number 10, Jack Grillo almost had the interception but just dropped it. And it'll be second and 10 for John Lugo. And those are the things I'm talking about. You uh, can't afford to not take advantage of those opportunities. When they give it to you, you have to take it. Now, uh, Caleb hasn't thrown that many interceptions this year. Only nine on the year. Very good for high school quarterbacking, especially with his touchdowns. But right there, you just saw a careless mistake, and you got to – work those out. you yeah, got to get that. I bet Grillo wishes he could get that back. And it's second and ten here for Don Lugo. There's the snap as he sets back. A little bit of pressure on him, and it's almost oh. intercepted again, but doesn't get it. Now it's third and ten here. Good cover there by, looked like that was number seven, Grant Walsh. Well, like you said, the, the Wolfpack's defense has been, they've stopped the run. This, this obviously last week that's what it took to win the game uh, but the defensive backs are definitely going to be challenged today this is probably going to be their biggest test of the year this or Chino 
And it's third and ten here for your Claremont defense. There's the snap. Number seven stepping back in the pocket. Tries to find out. Doesn't have everyone. And he's scrambling. And he just gets it. It will be first and ten. He's about a, uh, I think or a little short. I, can't, I thought he got it. But it looks like they'll be marking him. Yeah, they're calling fourth, fourth and down. inches here. They're in Claremont territory, but it's a little bit no man's land. So I could see a I could see a run here. But you have to be careful with this offense. And it's fourth down now for Don Lugo. As there's the snap and there's the handoff. And he looks oh like they're boy. just gonna give it to him. Looks like he just got it. He got it on that last little effort there. Because they stopped him. Yeah, it looked like just got him in. And uh, there it is, first down for Don Lugo. As they move the chains on the run there, it looked like a little bit less than a yard, but still was able to get the inches they needed. And it'll be first and 10 here for Don Lugo as they're moving the ball down the field well. Stepping back, and he throws that ball deep, and it's caught on the sideline. That was number 11. Joshua Morales, the sophomore. Now, you're not going to be hearing me say sophomore or freshman a whole lot. This is a senior-heavy team. Like, I felt like I was typing something wrong when I was making the rosters. There are a lot of seniors, and this is the year that they're looking to prove that they have a good chance to win CIF and to win league. Yeah, this is big for them. And there's the snap. Looking for the touchdown pass. Does he have it? He is intercepted at the two-yard line. And... There we go. There we go. Number 20, Ivan Garcia, the running back. We called his name on that side of the ball, but there he is. And Claremont will be getting the ball off the interception early. And there were a lot of passes that looked like they could have been picked. But, you know, you're wondering, are you going to get it? And they did. Yeah, but that, they were, there was, like you said, three opportunities for them to be able to, like, uh, turn the ball over. They came ready to play. I think the defensive back saw the challenge. At practice, and they realize, hey, this is going to be our game to win. If we're going to win this game, it's going to be because of the defensive back. And, and uh, we've, we've got it going here. Here we go. Now, this is maybe the weaker side of the field here. The Don Lugo defense has not been great, and the Claremont offense hasn't either. It's first and ten at the own, their own two-yard line. There's the snap, and there's the run there by number 24 Gatsby and he got a couple yards there looks like he got about maybe two three yards there and it'll be second and eight yeah this is where the the wolf I mean you definitely I mean you're, you're back backs against the wall here literally and the, the last thing you can do is just like any turnover any mistake has been this side of the field yeah we've had a we've had a safety or two this season yeah. obviously you don't want that if you're the coaching staff and it's second and second and six here for the well, pack. See, they have a lot of men in the backfield. Looks like there's some confusion on the defensive side over there. And there's the fullback there dive is. there. And oh, he there is standing. Is. Number four sent him to the ground. And he is running past the 40, 45. 50 and he is down past the 50 yard line and man Nathan Ordonez with the run now this is the thing that the Wolfpack can do to you that despite the record they could still we've had several opportunities this year where we've had long lengthy touchdowns and that was a good run right there a good you, 40 yard run you haven't seen Nathan Ordonez get out of it a lot you see him get those like five six yard tough nail straight down the middle but right yeah. there he bounced out send a man to the ground with the stiff arm and and he was trying to get more because he was pushing <laughs> and shoving his I way saw, through saw a little hesitation and it will be first and 10 here for the Wolfpack just past the 50 yard line in Conquistador, Conquistador's territory excuse me yeah not the most easiest word <laughs> to say right Looks like they're staying with the same formation. There's the snap, and there's the handoff to the running back, Gumvin, and he gets by the pass line, and he looks like he got about to the line of scrimmage there. Yep. And it'll be second and ten here for the Wolfpack now. The Wolfpack had a decent bit of success passing last week. They were able to move the ball down, not super efficiently, but enough where you can keep the run game and you can do PA, you can do some play action. So do you think we could see a little bit of passing from this team? I think so. I think they're going to try to lure them into the run. 
and then uh, have some opportunities maybe on the uh, you know, mid side over a linebacker. Mm. That's something that they could they could do easily. And it's second and ten here for the Wolfpack, 51 yard line or sorry, 49 yard line. Bix Lazar is in that quarterback. May I add? There's the snap and there's the toss to Gumpin and doesn't get much there. And he is tackled behind the line of scrimmage by number 44. Shane Biggs, man, he spotted that. I think he saw that coming and there was no fooling him. And that's a loss of about five yards there. And are we gonna have another game where we're calling 44? Felt like I called him about 20 times last week. And here we go. Third and 15 here, they're back in their own territory. 46 yard line now for the Wolfpack, and you have to guess this is a pass here. Yeah, third and 15, maybe a screen? Yeah, I was thinking you could see a screen to like Gumbin or something. And you know, if he has the gap, he will find it. As it's third and 15 for the Wolfpack, and there's the snap, and there's just a direct handoff. And loss of a yard there. Well, they got really held up as soon as, I mean, that one big play. And after that, it was a struggle to get even one yard. And it's fourth and 16 here. And here comes the punting team led by Carter Montgomery. Well, I've told you that Carter is the JV quarterback, right? Well, JV just won the league yesterday. Good for them. They had a nice season. They, they have had a nice season. Six and four led by Coach Grell and that whole coaching staff. Big shout out to them. Yeah, they did a really good job this season with the boys. And you definitely got to be hopeful for the future of this team with a season like that. As Claremont will be punting this away. And there's the kick and it's skied. Bounces at the 20 and it's still rolling. Picks it up at the 15, number one. Oh, There's a flag, flag on the field. Yep, Looks that. like maybe a, was that a block in the back? And yeah. he gets it by a couple, and he's still standing. Yeah, it was a block in the back. Good run there, but the block in the black back will negate most of that there. That was received by number one, Curly Kirkpatrick Jr., the senior. Penalty was thrown back at the 15, I think it was. Yeah, so that run's going to be coming back a little. Yeah. There. Don Lugo's already walking back, realizing that it was on them. Oh, oh, my we would also like to thank our first quarter sponsor, Link Educational Institute. And we'd also like to thank all of our sponsors for helping fund the program, helping fund us, and, you know, helping deliver the product on the field that you're seeing, and all of our boosters as well. Thank you to all of them. Yeah, we'll have to send out little shout outs to all the uh, people that make this happen. Boosters, sp uh, sponsors, but also the crew behind the scenes. And we'll mention it's them later. first and 10 at the 10 yard line. They, uh, they're back a little after that penalty here. And they're trying to get out of their own red zone here. First and 10 for Don Lugo. Little motion. There's the snap. Stepping back, there's the pass to number 11. They're on him, and he is brought down maybe a yard. I think he might be lost a yard on that one. Looks like. And yeah, it looks like he gained maybe one yard there. And it'll be second and nine for the Wolfpack. And there's the snap. And he has pressure on him. Number 70 tried to get it, and he just got that ball off. Great, great pass there by number seven, Pacheco. I couldn't see who was on him, but he was he had somebody draped on him, and he threw that ball with somebody all over him. Looked like it was Ben Kim, the junior, that was almost on him. Looked like he was tugging at his shoulder pad, but yeah, just couldn't bring him down. Impressive to be able to throw the ball with somebody on you like that. And it's third and three for Don Lugo. And it looks like they tried to do a little bit of uh, trickery right there. Little dummy dummy. This is the time of year where player uh, teams kind of just save some real and fancy the plays. Snap. And there's the handoff, and number 22 gets through. It looks like he just got it, and it'll be first down for Don Lugo. Boy, he kept those legs moving, and then that I think that gave him the first down. Yeah. 
coaches will always push to keep your legs moving. It's always useful. And first and 10 at the 21 yard line for Don Lugo as there's the snap. And he's just looking to get to his running back, number 22. And he gets oh. by number 23, but he's brought down. That was number 70, that was number 79, Gonley. Boy. The captain. Max had, the, had him right in front of him, but he was kind of standing too tall. Well, he's a tall guy. Yeah, he's very <laughs> tall. See him, he towers over me. It's yeah. You gotta bend those hips, buddy. <laughs> Get low, as tackles. the coaches say. And it's second and eight here for Don Lugo. Stepping back, looking for the pass, and there it is to the open running back, number 22. That was Bo Cantley. Now, in this pass heavy team, you don't normally expect your running back to be that much involved, but you've seen he's been maybe his number one target all night. Yeah, and he's starting to, it feels like he's starting to get comfortable. Maybe he was a little nervous in the first drive, but now he's, he's really starting to feel it. And there's a timeout on the field. That's by Claremont. And we'd like to thank more of our sponsors, Corky Kitchen and Bakery. Hot Homes, Property Management and Real Estate, call Monique and start packing. And State Farm, Eric Martinez, call 909-962-6242. And so we'll send out our first shout out for the film crew. I know you guys always hear uh, Luke and Ryan and myself as we're doing the play-by-play, -play, and it almost seems like it's just us. <laughs> just us talking the reality the is that there is quite a bit of student uh, involvement in this production and... Um, so today behind the direction is actually Linnea Anderson. She is one of our student uh, film crew members and she's uh, controlling the cameras and, and bringing you guys to show. Thank you so much, Linnea. And the offense and defense are coming back onto the field here. First and 10 for Don Lugo. As they're looking to get their first points of the ball game here, we have 2.41 left to go in this first quarter of action. Claremont is keeping this a good game. As there's the snap. Trying to get pressure there. You saw the double team on Gonley. And he throws on the run there, but it's just overthrown a little bit. He was going for number 12, Noah Peck. Yeah, Noah looked like he didn't realize that the ball was coming to him. He thought maybe there was a receiver behind him. Yeah, and he, it looks like he would have had it. Didn't see anyone yeah, past him. He was wide open. He could have scored. Mm. And it's second and 10 now for Don Lugo. Just 2.35 left to go in this first quarter of action. Again, we'd like to thank our first quarter sponsor, Link Educational Institute, as well as a couple other of our sponsors, Be Perfect Paralysis Awareness Foundation, The Perfect Step TPS, and Paralysis Recovery Centers. And there's the snap. Looking for the short pass there. Can't oh, find anyone, yeah. oh, and he fumbles it. I didn't know what he was doing there, but oh, yeah. Godley with the pressure and the forced fumble, but they do... Don Lugo does recover, and it's a loss, to, loss of about five there, and it'll be third and 15 for the Don Lugo. That's the third opportunity that the uh, Fourth? Are we at fourth doors. now? Is it fourth? I think so. You had the two almost interceptions. You had the fumble. Oh, yeah, fourth. You're right. Fifth if you include the interception. Right. They've been playing a little bit of careless football so far. We'll see if they can get it, get it together on this third and 16 attempt. Well, they have the offense for it. There we go. Trying to get pressure, and he slung that thing down the field, but it's just over him. Oh, my goodness. That was a deep pass, but he just couldn't reel it in. Looked like it was a little bit ahead of him, and it'll be fourth and 16. I mean, those passes look like they're easy when you see them in college or the pros, but it is, it's oh, hard. He was to on the run. To time that oh. and throw that that deep and be accurate. Yeah, that was – I was – that would have been a – you know, it would have not been great for us, but it would have been a highlight play for sure. Yeah. And he just didn't have him, too. As we have 149 left to go in this first quarter of action, Don Lugo will be punting the ball, led by number 10. And there's the punt. A little bit of a high snap, but he still got it off. Wolfpack should be in good field position here. And the ball got at the here. 40, and he tried to get oh. it, but he's brought down immediately. Tackled by number 14, Jack Grillo with the recover, but 
Gavin Herzenzuk just did not let that happen. He's also their team's leading receiver, too. 12 total touchdowns on the year for number 14 for Don Lugo, and he, he's been a dog so far. How badly did the coach cringe when he reached up for that ball Ugh. after it bounced and hit the ground? That's like the, the most troubling thing when you're a coach looking at a ball bouncing on the ground and then your player goes and tries to get it <laughs> as you're getting tackled. Uh. Looks like we had a penalty on the play. And it looks like Claremont will be going back a little. He's like running into the kicker, I think. Oh. It wasn't enough to get the first down, but uh, they'll definitely go back. Looks like five yards. And... Looks like they keep the yards the same. It'll be first and ten, just back a little bit. They're at the 30-yard, 31-yard line right there. As there's the snap and there's the handoff to the fullback as he just goes through and gets, looks like, five yards there. Yeah, just about five. And That's going to be, I think this is going to be their game plan. Is just kind of You've seen a lot of that double motion right. today. And not fully, looked like that might have been Max. Deeper, I wasn't 100% sure. It almost kind of reminds me of Chafee when Chafee was Yeah, running. it does kind of remind me of Chafee, and it didn't work for Chafee. They lost that game 17-12, but for Claremont, this is obviously a different defense. Yeah. And that Chafee game, when Don Lugo played Chafee, Chafee scored 44 points in And the playing that style right mm. there. They did lose that game, but still, 44 is a lot of points. Yeah. And you see the three men in the backfield we've been seeing all night. And there's the handoff to Gatsby, and oh. he just gets tripped up. That was number 24 on the tackle, Juan Rocha, the senior. I knew I, I knew I recognized that name. I saw I saw a poster for him earlier. And it will be third and third and five for the Wolfpack. No gain on that last run. Was able to get back to the line of scrimmage. I'll tell you what, the uh, linebackers for Don, Don they've been Lugo great. are starting to really bite on those the, on those runs, but it's going to leave and have an opening for a pass, a possible play action. And clock is ticking down here, and I don't think we'll be able to get another playoff. Hey, if I would have told you at the end of the, or in the mid middle of the season when we were 0-6 or whatever, that we'd be three quarters away from possibly winning league. I don't know. I don't me? know what I would have said, but <laughs> here we are. Here we are. Couldn't state any better myself. And again, we'd like to thank first quarter sponsor Link Educational Institute for sponsoring your Wolfpack football. And now we'd like to thank our second quarter sponsor, Rancho Rain Gutters, seamless aluminum rain gutters. Call 909-931-5235. And so I'll take an opportunity to kind of thank the film crew again. Um, we've got working the scoreboard that you guys see on the, on the live stream, uh, Mr. Eduardo Rodriguez, who's also part of our film crew. And he manages the film, the scoreboard, uh, wherever we go. It's sometimes difficult during the uh, away games because of the internet connections, but he does a really good job to getting the information to you as best he can. So thank you to Eduardo. Thank you so much, Eduardo. Appreciate it. Appreciate it, buddy. I appreciate it. <laughs> and we'd like to thank a couple more of our sponsors here. The Foothill Gold Line. There's more Gold Line to come. Stay up on the progress at foothillgoldline.org. Sprouts Farmers Market, Raining Ryan LLP, Montgomery Steel, the Inland Empire Personal Injury Attorneys, and Union on Yale. Thank you all so much for sponsoring Wolfpack Football. And here it is. It's third and five for the Wolfpack, looking to convert on third down. Looks like they're trying to draw him off sides there. And there's the handoff to the fullback, and he stays oh. up. Number four, Donez, and he's trying to get it. And it looks like... What a good run. Looks like a little bit of confusion from the refs. Nathan was really and uh, pushing that, and he, he fought for that yard. He did. But it looks like they were marking him a... Oh, they gave him the first yeah. down. I thought they were going to mark him a yard short. 
would have been a little disappointed personally, but. No, he definitely earned that with that run. He got stopped about three yards short. And, and he, he just kept, it. kept moving, kept his legs moving. He is a very strong man from my interactions with him. That's one thing that's clear to see, the junior and the captain. And it's first and 10 for Claremont as they're at the 40, as at their own 41 yard line. We get the linebackers in, looks like they're trying to blitz. And there's the snap and there's the handoff to Gatsby and he sees the hole and he keeps running. He's still standing and he gets the first down. And the freshman, I thought he was down maybe a two, three yard carry, but he saw a hole that we didn't see for sure and was able to keep it going. That's one of the things that Gatsby does really well. Once he sees that hole, he is quick to get to it. And if you don't tackle him before he gets to the sideline, forget about it. <laughs> And the chains move for Claremont. It's first and 10 now in enemy territory, 48 yard line. And they're looking to get some points on the board, get points on the board first. And here we go, it's first and 10 for the Wolfpack. Get the three back set again. This is what we've been doing. There's the motion. And there's the snap, and there's the handoff straight down the middle. Looks like he got about six yards there. Six, five, six, and it'll be second and five here for the Wolfpack. Looks like the mentality here for Coach Heil is that we're going to just keep pounding it down until you stop it. When has the mentality ever not been that is my question. Right. And this may be more of the offensive coach. I mean, we know the, Heil, the Heils were, are more defensive-minded. Correct. Especially Anthony, he was the former defensive coordinator for the Wolfpack before now being the interim head coach for the rest of this season. And here we go, it's second and five for the Wolfpack. As there's the motion, there's the snap, there's the handoff to number 24, Gatsby, and he stays up somehow. How did he do that? And he's moving down the sideline and gets tackled right past the 30 at about the 28-yard line. And how did he stay up? That's what I'm wondering. Let's go! That's something that the Conquistadors are going to have to pay close attention to. Conquistadors, okay. Okay, I got it. <laughs> because if, he's, if he, like I said, he was one tackle away from breaking it. And another great run by the freshman. He has been, I mean, I wouldn't even say a bright spot. He has been the man for this team. He's been their lead back as a freshman, you know. And it's, you had a lot of pressure coming in, you know. Caden Camposano was just an electric player. He could play, you know, I don't think of it. I don't think you use five, five tool player in football much, but he could. He could run. Pa pass. I've seen him pass a couple of times. He could catch. He could do everything. But Gatsby has filled his role tremendously and has amazing vision for, again, just being 14, 15. Props to the coaching staff for identifying him in, you know, in the freshman uh, side of the team and then just bringing him in little by little. And uh, here he is with an opportunity and doing a good job on a very, very important game for both teams. And here we go. They're just tipping on the red zone now. 28-yard line in enemy territory for Claremont. It's first and 10. You have the three men in the backfield. There's the motion. And there's the snap. And there's the handoff to Gatsby. Gets through that first hole. Looks like number 44 could have maybe had him. And he gets pushed back a lot. But they're going to give him, looks like maybe a yard there. Maybe no gain, a yard. Looks like one yard uh, there. Looks like a yard, yeah. And it'll be second and nine for Claremont at the 27-yard line in Conquistadores. But those linebackers for Lugo are really biting on the edge there. You got you to gotta expect some play action maybe to come. You know Bix can run the play action very well. That's maybe his strongest suit as a quarterback. Hey, you know what? I'm really impressed in, uh, with the game plan that the Wolfpack uh, has started this game out with. There's the motion. A little bit of movement on the defensive line, and there there's is. the pass there. Wide open is Max Lieber, and oh, he is tackled. He got slammed, but not before getting the first down. And they look to be at 
just the 10 yard line now. And this is textbook football, offensive football. Run the ball, get the linebackers to bite. And then once they bite, and he just lofted it up there for Max. I remember talking to Bix. I remember him saying that Max was one of his favorite targets, and you saw it there. You saw that connection. He was able, looks like he was lobbing it up to him. And we have 8.31 left to go in this first half of action at Don Lugo High School. First and goal here. There's the motion. And that's gonna open There's up the snap. Way. There's the toss. They get by the first line. Gatsby is tackled back about five yards lost there. It'll be second and 15 now. And no one was open. They just, the defense, or sorry, there was no gaps open. The whole defense, they were able to read that well. And you got to see if Coach Kyle will mix it up now. Yeah, they kind of looked like the, I thought they would go for another dive there down the middle because the linebackers moved away and leaving a little bit open in the front. And it looks like a whistle. Not sure what the refs are talking about there. And Claremont is in the flag. red zone. Yeah, I was a little bit confused. Looking to get their first points of the ball game at the 15-yard line. It's second and goal, but they have a bit of a way to go. It's unusual to have all the referees there at the ball as the Wolfpack broke the huddle. And carry on. We have eight minutes, and clock is ticking right now. Again, a touchdown for Claremont would be huge here to take the lead over Don Lugo to try and win a co-championship. And there's the run by Garcia. And looks like he got maybe a yard there, not much. And it'll be third and goal with a long way to go now. From here, you have a kicker who can make it, you know, which I wouldn't say is super rare in high school. But, you know, some teams, they just aren't able to get the kickers. Oh, and there's a Claremont man down. Not sure if you mentioned already about our um, Aaron not being here today. Or Ryan Dumphy. Oh, yeah. Ryan Dumphy has been suspended from this game. That's from what I've heard from his ejection last week. Yeah, usually when you get a double um, unsportsmanlike, kicks you out of that game and then the next game. And obviously he's very much missed he's maybe probably at least a top tier player on this team if not maybe the best he is a physical man and I'm sure he's about bummed as anyone to be missing this game yeah absolutely we said this is something that the kids down there playing should be proud that they're here with the season that we've had and to be here on the last game with this opportunity and here we go it's third and goal for the Wolfpack but they have a long way to go till the end zone have a little bit of man on man at the bottom of the screen looks like that's Ari on there but they're just going to hand it off to Gatsby he's trying to find it and he can't find it wow. tackle looks like at the line of scrimmage that's number 44 Shane Biggs Looks, looks like we'll be calling his name a little bit tonight. Is that 46 or 44? No, it's 46. Uh, sorry, Adam Luna. That was a big hit. Oh, yeah, big hit. And I believe that's Carter out there. So it looks like we've got our kicking team out. Carter, three-and-a-half star kicker. Looking to give Claremont the lead. Not going to say anything about his kicking ability. I don't want to risk anything. There's the snap. There's the hold. And there's the field goal attempt. And it's Looks good. 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 And it will be a three-point lead for the Wolfpack with 6.36 left to go in the game. Carter Montgomery able to send it down the uprights. And Claremont scoring by now isn't that much of a shock. But Don Lugo having zero on the board is definitely a little bit surprising, especially considering how good they've been on offense all year. Yeah, they started a little bit shaky, and the quarterback looked like, uh, Pacheco looked like he was starting to kind of get his bearings as the last drive. Um, that they were out down. Here. But, uh, yeah, no, the, the, the turnover definitely 
um, um, is helping out here. We'd like to thank more of our sponsors, I Heart Guts, the Back Abbey, and that's about it for now. As Claremont will be kicking off, leading this game 3-0 with 6.36 left to go in the first half of action here on Claremont High Network. Thank you all so much for watching. And here we go, kicking off. Looks like it's just, or just got into number 10's hands, trying to find a hole. And he's brought down just past the 30-yard line. Looks like the 32. And the Don Lugo offense is coming onto the field looking to get their first points of the ball game. You know, it looks like it looks like uh, Don Lugo could really be on the verge here of just like just an explosion. It. Yeah, I mean they almost had it a couple of plays. So this Claremont defense is really going to have to lock in to try and keep holding this team to no points. Hey, they'll take those overthrows all night. And there's the snap, and there's the fake handoff there, but the screen to number 14, and he's still in bounds, and he got the first down there. That was number 14, Gavin Hurenzik, the star receiver for this Don Lugo offense, and it'll be a first down for Don Lugo. Here they go, hurrying up to the line. And there's the handoff to number 22, and he doesn't get much behind the line of scrimmage. We'll see, they say he lost about two yards there. That was led by Gonley. We've been calling his name a bit tonight. He's been having a good day so far, or a good night so far, excuse me. Yeah, he's, as, he's gonna have to be double teamed if they're, otherwise he's gonna do that all night. As we're just going under six minutes to go in the first half of action. And there's the snap. No one in the backfield. But there's the throw to his running back, number 22. And that ball is fumbled out of bounds. Strong hit there by Grant Walsh. And number 22 just didn't have it. It will be third and eight here for Don Lugo. That was Bo Cantley, a senior. He's definitely the star running back from what we've seen tonight. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the Wolfpack is hitting hard. Mm. They are uh, going after the football. And it's... Third and two, third and three here, and looking for the quick pass. Doesn't have anything, and he's running for it, and he's just short. Great defensive play there by the line, and looks like number 70's helmet is off. That's Ben Kim. Looks like him combined with number 52, Ivan Shishkin. I think he has to come off the field with the helmet issue. And here we go. Subbing 64 in real quick. Vincent Quinn. Fourth down, fourth and two here for Don Lugo. If they, Claremont has been known so far for getting their stops on. Timeout. And Wolfpack. timeout for the Wolfpack. They're looking to talk yeah. it over. I mean, you know, you had the whole quick sub in thing, and Don Lugo's running it fast. You want to sit down, talk it over a little. Yeah, I think that was a smart timeout. I think the, there was a lot of confusion going on in the defense, running back and forth. So it was a good opportunity to get 70 back in the game. Yeah. And we have just about 5.30 left to go in this first half of action. In this defensive battle, who would have thought? <laughs> it has been a defensive battle, and Claremont is known for their defense, but Don Lugo is definitely not. I've got my money on the Wolfpack if we're going to go a defensive battle in the first half here. The least amount of points that Don Lugo's allowed all year is 14, and that was in their win over Hawthorne, their one non-league win. But other than that, it's just been 30 seemingly every game. 38 points allowed versus El Rancho, 55 versus Los Osos, 59 versus Chino, 38 versus Fillmore, 31 versus San Dimas, 54 versus South Hills, and 40 versus 44 versus Chafee, and 40 versus West Covina. Their defense lets up a lot of points. That's what I'm trying to get at. And there's the snap, and there's the quick oh. throw, and it's batted Beautiful. down, and that is a turnover on downs for the Wolfpack again. How many times have we said that over the past couple of weeks? That is a textbook Anthony Heil defensive call, man. <laughs> Blitz from the corner, from the edge. I love it. And it is a turnover on downs for Don Lugo, and Claremont will be getting the ball just in their own territory at the 40, looks like in between the 47 and 48-yard line in Claremont territory. A 
Also, we'd like to give a quick thank you to Don Lugo letting us use their press box. We obviously always appreciate. Yeah, this is one of the more uh, nice ones. I would. There's, it's yeah, it's about ten cushion feet wide, seats. which I like. Cushion seats as well. Oh, we need to get those in Claremont. And there's the snap. There's the handoff to Gadsby, or excuse me, I think that's Arion. Might have been wrong there. And yeah, that was number 20. Yeah, that was number 28, Arion Kennebrew there, the sophomore. Arion, I have a couple. Of I have a couple classes with him. He's one of the most energetic guys I know. He's a a class clown, but in the best way possible, I would say. And he's the type of guy that can just energize a team. And right there, and he can, has burners too. And right there, you saw him get three yards. And Claremont's in a manageable second and seven here. With just under 4.45 left to go in the first half. And there's the handoff right down the middle, but flags oh, yeah, on the flags. field. False start. Looks like a false, false start, start on Claremont. And they will be back five yards. So now with you doing the announcing for the football games, are you, do you find that you're a little more popular on campus? <laughs> People know you? Uh, I wouldn't necessarily say that. I'd say it's more fun telling my friends about it. And they'll be like, oh, that's you? Because our viewership has gone up in the eighth bracket that you're in uh, oh. from last year. So last year we had a lot of people that were, you know, 30 plus that were watching the, the shows, and now it's like under 30 that are watching it more. Well, I'm trying to spread the news, yeah. trying to get it out there. That's what we want. <laughs> it's always fun talking to my friends, and they'll be like, hey, did you watch the game? They'll be like, they'll be like, yeah, did you? I'm like, I commentated it. Yep. A lot of, a lot of surprise reactions from that over the year, but I, I think most, most people know now. And it's second and 12 here for the Wolfpack. And there's the snap, and there's the handoff, and looks like he was tackled about three yards short originally, but he was able to keep moving and get it back to the line of scrimmage. Well, that was he, Gatsby in. Yeah, he grabbed onto the face mask, and I thought he were going to flag him for it, but he let go. As soon as he grabbed hold of it, he just let it go. And it'll be third and long, third and 12 for the Wolfpack as they're looking to pass the ball a little bit, I'm guessing, this play. And... I mean, big shout out to the Don Lugo defense. They've been playing very well so far. Definitely, probably their best game of the year so far on the defensive side of the ball. And here we go. It's third and 12 for your Wolfpack as they're looking to get the third down conversion here. As there's just a handoff down the middle and he's stopped behind the line. Loss of one there and you've seen they've been doing just handoffs down the middle on these third and long situations I mean you're in a situation where you don't need to be throwing it so I understand but you know obviously if you're a fan you want to see him just sling that thing deep you know get some more points on the board but instead of that the special teams unit will be coming out this type of game I mean the things that are most important to keep you know under control are the turnovers and when you're in a third and 13 with our offense as the way it is, that's the last thing you want to do is, is turn the ball over this side of the field. And there's the snap, and there's the punt. Looks like he almost got a hand on it. He got his fingertips on it, that's for sure. But it bounces, and it's a good bounce there. Added about the 23, 22-yard line in Don Lugo territory, so this... Don Lugo offense will not be in an amazing spot. So on top of the turnovers, but you know what else plays a part is special teams. And what have we been saying for the last, like, four games for the Claremont? If anything was the bright side, it was always our special team. It play. was always the special teams. You've had good returns from Jack Grillo, and you've had good punts from Carter Montgomery. Absolutely. Ha haven't seen many special teams mishaps this season. You know, maybe the occasional low snap, but that happens. It's high school football. As it's first and 10 for Don Lugo at the 23-yard line. Got a last-second substitution there. There's the snap, and he throws that thing deep. He's hit while he does it, but number 14 has it, and he cannot catch up with him, and that's a touchdown for Don Lugo. And, I mean...
Uh, you knew he was going to oh, yeah, eventually you knew it. connect on one of those. <laughs> and he was hit as he threw. He might have actually overthrown him a little if he wasn't hit. But that ball just landed right into the lap of Gavin, adding to his touchdown as Claremont trails this game 6-3 to three now with CIF and league hopes on the line here. Yeah, hit him right in stride. That was... Uh, Oh, and that was a really good pass. Don't know if our viewers heard that, but he just passed 1,000 receiving yards on the year, which is incredible. It's impressive for a high school kid. And the kick is good, and it will be a 7-3 game here, and it is loud here at Don Lugo. They love their conquistadors here in, China, in the Chino Valley. Conquistador. Conquistador. Um, I'm, I'm never going to get that. And you know what else they like is the scoreboards. How uh, about this, the another Ch one. Chino Valley schools that have gotten all the football uh, programs got uh, big scoreboards here. I'm sure by in a year or two, these things will be, they'll be doing like player animations. They'll be doing all of oh, that. Yeah. But they're just learning, you know, I've talked to a couple of the people running it. We were trying to see if we could tap in our live stream <laughs> to the board, but nobody knew how to do that yet. Uh. They said it's capable of doing that, but we don't have access to that. And here we go. Don Lugo kicking off after the one play touchdown pass there. And there's the snap. Good punt there. Received by number 28, Arion Kennebrew, as he's looking for the gap, and he's still standing. And he is tackled just past the 25-yard line at the 26-yard line. And that's where this offense will be taking over. All right, well, 2.35 left in the game. Um, we haven't had the offense that's been able to move the ball uh, that fast or that quickly. But we could definitely move it. Uh, Don Lugo is just uh, what kind of defense they're going to be expecting here from them. I mean, you got to see how the coaches can change up the plays. They've been starting to see what they're doing, so... We'll see what Heil and the right, coordinators come up with. As we have 2.35 left to go in this first half of action, it's 7-3, to three, Don Lugo leading by four. And there's the motion that we've been seeing all day, and the defensive line adjusts with it as Claremont looks to run the fullback dive, and they only get about a yard there. It will be second and nine for the Wolfpack. I'd also like to thank a couple more of our sponsors, DJ Jr. for our DJ Knees Anytime, Anywhere, Percy C. Thomas, Engineering Contractor, and Pomona Valley Hospital Medical Center. Thank you all so much for sponsoring Wolfpack Football. And I'd also like to, again, thank our second quarter sponsor, Rancho Rain Gutter, seen as Aluminum Rain Gutter, call 909 931 5235. And we're just under two minutes now at Don Lugo, and there's the snap, and they hand it off again to Gatsby, and he is just brought back in the backfield, and... Well, they're not being fooled anymore. Uh, they are not. The linebackers definitely are staying home, and they are uh, attacking anybody who gets the ball in the backfield. And it's third and 12 now for the defense, as it looks like a timeout was called. And we'll have both sides discussing it. Overall, this has been a pretty successful first half for the Wolfpack. Oh, um, yes. We're down in the score, but overall, I think they've moved the ball on the ground when they needed to throw the ball. Um, they've had one successful completion for yeah. big for big. Uh, it was yardage. a big gain. But so far, you can't say Claremont's done bad. And if you come out of that halftime break and you come out energized, you're receiving the ball to start it off. So you can see something there, and we can see Claremont lead this game. And, you know, you always, ha you always have this drive. I know it's third and 12, which is we've seen a couple of times, but anything can always happen. And there's the snap, and there's the handoff to Arion, but he is just brought back in the backfield. That was number... 91 there. Looks like they gave him the... They, 
Yeah, they marked it a little, not back where he was tackled, but they marked him at the like 18 yard line. And it's fourth and 19 now for Claremont, and they're gonna they're gonna be punting here, deep in their own territory. And if you're the defense, you just gotta not let anything get behind you. It looks like uh, Don Lugo calls a timeout to stop the clock. And we'd like to thank a couple more of our sponsors, AAA Waterjet. We make the cut. Tavern, Barber and Shave, Shogun, and CG Custom Graphics. Call 909-296-5150. And we have another one of our film crews that we want to thank, and that's uh, Caitlin Zhang. She uh, does our, usually she does the live sh uh, huddle slide line for the coach coaching staff. Uh, she runs that system and runs the uh, production of that that system that allows the coaches to see the videos from all angles on the sideline instantly. Uh, and today she's manning one of our uh, lower field cameras. So thank you to Caitlin. Big shout out to Caitlin. She's she's really great. All these people we're mentioning for film crew are all students, by the way. And there's the snap. It's a little low, but Carter's able to get it. And that kick is aired. 50-yard line. It gives a Claremont bounce and Leeper trying to avoid it, and it gets down at about the 27-yard line, down by number six, Indra Petra, the, sen the senior. Now this is gonna be the danger zone for the oh, Wolfpack because like we saw last play, right, right about goes. here. Yeah, this is where he doesn't have a problem slinging it. And for all of you just joining us, Claremont is trailing in this game, seven to three as we have about a minute 30 left to go in this first half of action on your Claremont High Network. And there's the snap. He's looking for a deep. Number 14 is trailing down the sideline. And he just had him, it looks like. And there we go, and that was number 12. Noah Peck, and he will get the first down there as they move the chains, and he's out of bounds, which stops the clock. So there's 1.21 left, and Don Lugo's looking to get a touchdown. There's the snap. Looking for something deep. He has it. He's hit while he's thrown, and it's intercepted by the Wolfpack. Number seven, Grant Walsh, and... For the second time today, they turn the ball over, and yeah, that's going to be gonna a problem. Be, that's going to be a bright side. I think that's going to be the message to the team at halftime: is that look, the defensive chances are there for us to get turnovers, and uh, just keep on the keep on it, keep playing hard on defense. And there's one twelve left to go in this first half of action. Now here's going to be the situation where what are the linebackers for Don Lugo thinking here? Are we going to, if the Wolfpack going to just run like you have been? Personally, if I'm a linebacker, I'm thinking they have to mix it up now. All right. Yeah, and you see them kind of playing a little bit of a prevent, prevent D right here. You have trips to the far side of the screen as he is just scrambled there. It looks like it was maybe trying to be a screen, yeah. but... If there was a player there, it would have been perfect, but there was no one there. Gatsby was a little bit to the right. Yeah. And it, that's an incompletion as we now have 107 left to go in this first half of action. It's second and 10 for the Wolfpack. And looks like they're making some subs, getting the call in. As again, we'd like to thank our first, second quarter sponsor, Rancho Rain Gutters. And here they go. The offense is coming up to the line here. It's second and ten for the Wolfpack with 107 remaining in this first half of action. Yeah, three receivers again up top. And there's just the handoff straight down the middle to Gatsby. And looks like he doesn't get. That's like the type of play that you would, you like, you know what, we're just going to just let, let the, the clock, clock run out. And we're going to go at halftime down 7-3, which is fine. And it's third and 11, it looks like. Lost a yard there. And the clock is ticking down. They should get one more playoff. Maybe just a knee ended out. Doesn't look like Don Lugo's trying to really get the ball back either. No, I think they're out of timeouts, aren't they? 30 seconds left. And here we go. And they do, they're not going for the knee. They do have trips to the far side. 
as there's the snap, and Bix Lazar is looking to pass it, and he sends it downfield to number 10. Oh, and it's just off the hands of Jack Grillo. I thought I saw a little bit of yeah. grabbing between the guys, but it looks like they're going to not give it to him, and he almost had it, but great completion there by number 20. It looks like it just went out of his hands there. Would have been a big game for the Wolfpack, but we have 15 seconds to go now. He beat his man. He was a uh, single cover down here on the bottom. Just couldn't get that. Just couldn't get that far ahead where you know you can beat the man. Good throw by Bix Lazar though. He did have it in his pocket. He's made her a couple of good throws today. I've been really impressed with his passing today. And that hasn't been a bright spot of this offense all year is their passing. So you got to hope for improvements on that. Snap is a little high, and the kick is blocked there. And the snap was high, and he couldn't get it. It's a turnover for the Wolfpack, and Don Lugo gets the ball deep in Claremont territory. It will be first and goal for Don Lugo now as they're looking to take a 14-3 lead heading into halftime, and it is loud here at Don Lugo. Well, they have nine seconds. They have no timeouts left, um, so they're going to have to draw something that's going to have to be in the end zone and you have a passer that can pass he can run as well you have a good running back number 22 you have a lot of options here but if he gets tackled before the end zone yeah, that will I'm, be the end of I'm the throwing half. the ball in the end zone and just hoping that I think you get two shots at it you should and here it is first and goal for Lugo only five yards to go for them as there's a timeout for Claremont. Now we've seen that uh, Pacheco, when Coach Howell has drawn up a blitz coming from the edge, wow. that Pacheco <laughs> gets a little rattled, and maybe that's something that they need right now, because if he has an, a clean pocket to throw into the end zone, he can make it happen. Thursday, we have an NFL game going on right now, too. Yeah. All the fantasy football people are oh. all psyched up. Yeah. I know I am. I don't have anybody going, but. One of, my, uh, one of my good friends does. He has James Cook going right now, I think. I don't know how he's doing for him. Got, got to stay focused on this game. And here we go. It's first and goal for Don Lugo as they're looking to double their score. Nine seconds to go. They get two shots at the end zone. If it's not an end zone pass, it could be over if he's tackled. Or, excuse me, it will be over. Let's see what Coach Heil has drawn up here with any pressure. And there's the snap. There's no pressure. And there's the pass. It's off his hands, and the flag is thrown. Oh, that's going to be on the offense. And it's on the offense. Maybe be pushing off, maybe? Man, pass or interference on the offense and you still don't catch it. That is not something you see a whole yeah, lot. Especially on this side of the field, especially this close to the end zone. And they will be back a little here. And now this is where you definitely need to start asking, you know, maybe we just kick it, go up by that touchdown. But we'll see what the coaching staff at Don Lugo decides. This is a new coaching staff. And for until league, this was not looking like a successful hire. This is just looking like your, you know, first year back. But now with league, they have been doing great as here we go for the field goal attempt for Don Lugo. Claremont to return one of these for a touchdown in their first week. And it kick is no good. Hey. And with one second left, Claremont will be getting the ball back as the kick is no good. I don't know. It didn't really look like it was touched. It just no. looked like he didn't kick it well. And this is a victory for, the, for Claremont right now. I mean, we got to just come back second half and be like, look, we took a lot of things that we could uh, – that uh, very positive uh, offensively and defensively and uh, just put it together in the second half. And that will be the end of the first half of action here on Claremont High Network. Now, Frank, before we head off, is there anybody else you want to thank from our crew? Absolutely, yeah. We have, like I said, student film, uh, film uh, crew members that help us out here. We got Daniel Palmer. Daniel Palmer, who is uh, one of our like go-to guys for just about anything. Uh, he can direct, he can run cameras, he can do scoreboard, he can do all kinds of stuff. If he's a senior, we're going to miss him. Uh, Daniel Palmer. 
And thank you all for tuning in. Make sure to tune back in for the second half of action on your Claremont High Network.
and welcome to the second half of action here on Claremont High Network. Claremont is only trailing by four as the halftime is winding down. Did you did you see the halftime show? I did not. I was down in the uh, locker room talking to Coach Anthony Heil. You know, you know, it was it was a game of Clue. Really? Yeah, I I I, I didn't get it right. It was the housekeeper. I thought it was the professor. You know, oh, nice. I'll, I'll, I'll take I'll take the loss on that one. But Claremont had a great first half defensively. They got punched in the mouth a couple of times, bad field position a couple of times, and they were able to only limit this to one score to a one score game. And to be honest, other than the one play that they gave up, which was that long touchdown, this defense has played lights out. Yeah, they've definitely been there. They've uh, accepted the challenge of this pass-heavy team, and the secondary has proven that they are here to play. Um, and Coach Coach Hiles' um, message at halftime was basically leave it on the field. Mm. I mean, Play hard, every fight for every yard, fight for every ball, every turnover, but leave it on the field. Mm. And... They do need to leave it on the field as they still trail. And this second half of football will be what determines the future of this year for the program. If they win again, they win a share of league championship and they'll be moving on to CIF. But a loss tonight eliminates them from a league championship and CIF. So this game means a lot to this team. And you just got to hope the offense comes out inspired and maybe they dial up something new, you know. Well, definitely. I mean, the way the offensive—I mean, this both of these teams have played this first half. You almost feel like the next, the, the person, the next team who scores a touchdown is going to win. And you know, maybe we might see a good pass from Claremont. You know, a different type of run, a trick play might be fun. We'll see what we can get from this Claremont offense as Claremont will be receiving the kickoff. And here we go, second action live on Claremont High Network. Arion with the receive there as he gets past the 20, past the 25, tries to get more but doesn't get stopped at the 26 yard line. And this, that's where the Claremont offense will be coming back onto the field. Get a real on the carry. I love that. On the kickoff. So we're in that very bad position. First and ten, the wolf Oh my god, that's so easy. I mean, you definitely found that situation that they're going to get the points off one and it looked like a touchdown, but they held them to zero points off the missed field goal. All right, here we go, first and ten. And here it is, first and ten for the Wolfpack offense as they look to get some points on the board to add on to their three points they scored off the field goal earlier. And there's the run. That's Jack Grillo in at quarterback, actually, but doesn't get much and is loses a couple of yards there. It's second and 12 here for the Wolfpack now. I mean, they've been in a lot of 12 situations, and I think that just really shows how good this Don Lugo defensive line is. Lots of three on the play. Second down and 13. It almost You know, maybe my bad. Maybe I need to pay a little bit more attention, get some glasses. As we have just under 11.15 left to go. There's the snap. There's the handoff. Looks like that was maybe an option play. That's what it looked like. You saw the little bit of thinking about it, but handed it off just a little bit late, and yeah. he'll lose a bit more yards there. It'll be third and 15 now they've come out and they've done something different but it hasn't seemed to work for them this drive well it's give or take here with something different is always the opportunity or the possibility of things going bad because if it's something that you're not used to doing uh, whether it be at practice or other games um, that's where the probability of disaster happening and it's third and 16 for the Wolfpack and we'll see what they do here we could see a deep throw or we could see uh, we could definitely see you know, just a run down the middle. We've seen them do that a little bit. Oh, and there's a flag on the field. And not sure what uh, the referee and is. And it's a delay of 
game on the Wolfpack, and they'll be back in another five. Well, that didn't seem like they had it that long. We're having a little bit of uh, confusion in the press box as well about what it was. And it'll be third and a long way to go for the Wolfpack. But they have him alone in the backfield, so it looks like they are going to try and pass for it. And oh, whistles. Face did. Not sure what's happening here with the refs. And timeout for Claremont. Yeah, I was a little confused there. <laughs> I'd like to give a quick shout out to our third quarter sponsor right now, TNG Roofing Company Inc. Roofing, solar, and rain gutters. Call 800 6 Roofing or go to www.tgroofing.com. Hire a contractor who knows both roofing and solar. They hate to use a timeout so soon in the first, in the second half, and then with a play that is third and a long way to go. 15. The reception was excellent. Actually, it's third and 21, right? Yeah, third and 21. Yeah. They have a bit to go. <laughs> and we'll see if they just try and run the drive out or if they right. do try and get a good play here. <laughs> Wolfpack have not come out of the top, which is great so far. We'll see what they can do. There's the snap. Dix is looking for the throw, and he's trying to throw it deep downfield, and it's caught! Oh my goodness! What was that? And it looks like he's down after the hit. I think he landed on the ball, and maybe he got knocked the wind out of was himself. Number 10, Jack Grillo, with the fantastic catch there. And oh my, that was beautiful there. He seems okay, he's walking off. Yeah, they want to take him off the field so they don't burn another timeout. And Claremont does get the first down and they're now in enemy territory at the 40, or sorry, the 39 yard line. That was a deep throw by Bix and he underthrew him a little bit, but yeah, no, Jack just had to jump on the DBs. Well, the, the linebackers are again, they're biting. At, at, at a possible run, and so that's leaving the middle of the field kind of open and also the defensive backs alone. And Jack Grillo has the speed. And there's the snap, and there's the handoff to the running back. Number 24, Gatsby, is moving to the outside, and he gets a couple there. That was a good run. That was indeed, and he's down at the 32-yard line. About two yards short. It'll be third and, or second and two here. And Gatsby has had a pretty good day so far. He's had a couple of plays blown up in the backfield, but he's had a couple of really good runs. And you see his explosiveness there, being able to create something out of nothing. And it's second and four here for the Wolfpack as their first drive of the second half. It looked like it was foaming out at the beginning, but they have been able to keep it alive. And now they're in enemy territory. Here we go. Lines up. Three men in the backfield again. We've seen it all day. There's the motion. There's the snap. And there's the handoff to Ivan Garcia. And he gets the first down and a couple more. He'll be down about the 27-yard line. And Claremont moved those chains again. It's first down for your Wolfpack. Well, Lugo really had the line there uh, jammed with, I think it was like, I, I counted seven players up at the line. And the Wolfpack was able to find a hole get the first down and here we go Claremont is approaching on Don Lugo red zone and they're looking to take the lead here a touchdown would take the lead a field goal would make it a one-point ball game and obviously they're going to try and go for the touchdown as much as they can but you got to think about kicking if you're in that fourth down situation but it's not it's first and ten it's loud here at Lugo look at them stacking the line again there's the motion, there's the stack, and there's the fullback dive. It looked immediately, looks like he got about two yards. It'll be second and eight here for the Wolfpack as they're at the 26 yard line in Lugo territory. The linebackers are 100% committed to the run. There think, is no you, doubt in their mind. You think this is the time to throw it deep? I mean, when you, you've gotta have, you gotta have some opportunities here. And 
we saw that little alley-oop to Leaper earlier. We could maybe see something like that happen again with play action. I mean, look at them already. They're starting to stack the line, and they're not, they're gonna commit to the run again. Starting to feel a little bit of shakiness here up in the booth. It's second and eight here. Lugo trying to get the stop. Got linebackers Fairmont on the edge. Looking Look at to get some points. There's the movement. There's the fake handoff. But he does not have space, and he is down. It's a sack. That was number 34, Christian Lieb. But number 24, Juan Rocha closed it out here, and that's a loss of a bit. It's third and 18 for the Wolfpack. And now they're back in do or die territory off the sack and they had the same idea that we had. You go for the pass, but Yeah, well, you know, they when a lot of guys if, if they're through. stacked and you don't get that you know, off immediately. If you don't fake a run, they're going to just collapse and crash the backfield. And it's third and eight now. Claremont looking to keep this drive alive. You're in no man's territory or you're teetering on the edge of it here, but you do need a couple of yards to be able to get a field goal back in decent area. You have trips up to the top of the screen here. There's the snap, they're looking for the throw. It's over middle and it's caught there. That's number, and he gets, oh, looks like he might be just at the line there. And they're, he's a yard short. Well, they're gonna be close enough to where you have to think about this. Oh, you definitely do. I mean, we were saying, you get the touchdown, you might have a chance to win this game with a defensive battle. It's fourth and two here. And we'll see, they've been doing well on the run recently, but you have good runners. I could definitely, I could see a fullback dive here. I mean, I mean, you gotta have to, you have to do it. And here they go. The offense is out onto the field. It's loud here at Don Lugo. Can they get the stop or will Claremont keep this drive alive? There's the snap. Yeah, There's he's got the it. handoff, and he... It's gonna be close. Looks like they're debating. Claremont saying they got it. Lugo saying they didn't, but I don't see a lot of Lug Lugo Conquistador saying they got it. Well, the referee on the far side of the field definitely looks like he gave him more than... We'll see, and... Yep, it looks like they gave it to him. And... Well, they're gonna the measure. Call. They're bringing out the chains here. This is just there. We'll see if Claremont can get it. And even if they don't, you do bury Don Lugo deep in the Maybe we could zoom there. in a camera there on the on the chain there. Ooh. See how close we can get it. And here they go. The chains are being brought out. Here we go. We'll see if they got it. Even a little bit will give them it. I think it's and I can't tell. To me, it looks like he got it just barely, but. And Claremont's yep, first motioning, down. and it's first down for the Wolfpack. They get the fourth down handoff, and it is That's first huge. down in the 20 yard line for Don Lugo. And that's gotta feel good. Oh, that must feel good, especially for the coaching staff. This drive looked dead a little bit ago, but they've come back for two third and longs. I think they were both third and 18s. And now, here we are in good field position, 18 yard line, first and 10 here. Well, this has been our nemesis though. The red zone's been kind of like the, the tough end of the field for us offensively. Claremont got stopped here earlier this game. They're looking to change that this drive. And there's the handoff to Gatsby and he sees a little gap, but he doesn't get much, about two yards there better run than I thought he was gonna get. And excuse me, that was number 20, Garcia. Garcia. They're all, all the running backs are 20s. You know, it's hard to differentiate between I think them. they did that on purpose. <laughs> and here we go, it's second and eight here for the Wolfpack at Don Lugo's 16 yard line. They are just teetering on the end zone here. Touchdown here would give them the lead no matter if the extra point goes in or not. And we have four minutes left to go in this third quarter of action here on Claremont High Network. For you just joining us, Claremont is trailing by four. It's seven to three ball game. There's the movement on the line and there's the handoff down the middle to number four, Nathan Ordonez. And he gets, looks like two okay, yards yeah, 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 there right. or. Yeah, about two. Two and should be third and four here, third and five around there for. 
the Wolf Pack. Looks like it'll be third and six. Third and six. Third and five. There we go. And we've been saying this all day that the linebackers are just playing up now. I mean, there's. We'll see what the coaching coaching staff dials up here. All right, here we go, man. Let's go with Sam. Claremont is looking to get a touchdown here, take the lead with under three minutes to go in the quarter. Fake handoff there. there. He's got him. He's got him. He has him, and that is a touchdown for the Wolfpack. Number 23, Max Lieber does it, and Claremont takes the lead, nine to seven. A man's on the ground at the celebration, but he's okay. And your Claremont Wolfpack have taken the lead for a chance at CIF on the line. A lot of energy here in the booth from us as they are going for the extra point to get the three point lead here. And this is something that's been happening all game long. We've been talking about it. I mean, there's a linebacker. We're just expecting run. And there's the kick. And the kick is good. And it will be a 10 to 7 ball game here at Don Lugo. Still a long way to go. Long way to go. We have Although maybe about three minutes. I they think. ate up a lot of time on this, on they this did. drive. That was the first drive of the second half, and we are under three minutes now that's amazing. in the third quarter. That's what it takes, though. I mean, for this, you know, this offense to just, you know, hammer it on the ground, and, and you're going to have those opportunities like that. Bootleg. And Claremont is kicking it off as they lead 10 to 7 now. And there it is, the big sleeper connection coming out well. I think the Don Lugo coach has got to be scratching his head. It's like, I can't stop the run. And the pass is and starting to break in, they're too. They're starting to pass the ball. And here it is. We'll see how far Carter can kick this as we have just under three again in the third quarter of action. Good kick there. Looks like it got out to about the 26, 27 yard line, and he drops the recovery, but he doesn't get much yardage there after he picked it up. Looks like he's down at about the 29 yard line. And here comes the Don Lugo offense coming out to the field. I mean, this team scores 30 basically every game. They only had one game this year where they didn't score 35 or more. And that was a shutout, actually. They got held to zero points versus San Dimas. And it's very rare for this team to not score a lot. But this Claremont defense is not breaking, as it's first and 10 for the Conquistadors. Again, I think I pronounced that wrong. I don't think I'm ever going to fix that. Good now, Daniel. Good now, Daniel. And there's the snap. There's the handoff to number 22 as he's coming out to the edge, and he gets tripped up. And there's the block there, and he's still standing. How is he still standing? And he's still going, and he gets past the 45-yard line, and he's in Claremont territory. Man, it's loud in here. They got that, they got that PA system great. And great run there by number 22. Wow. We've been calling his name a bit today, but he's not a big part of this offense from what we saw. But Hey, right now he's, he's the, the guy, guy that says, I'll take us all the way. I'll carry the team. Let's go. And it's first and 10 for Don Lugo. We'll see if they hand it off again. And there's the fake handoff in the pass to number 84. And Indra Petra gets the tackle. And that's another first down for Don Lugo as he's down at the 29, 28 yard line. And Don Lugo is moving down the field. They've caught Claremont off guard. Well, I think they sense the urgency. They don't want to be down in the second half, knowing what's at stake. Now, no. Don Lugo does have a trip to CIF almost secured. If Claremont wins today, they will enter, I believe they will enter a coin toss with another two-win team to go into CIF. That's what I've heard. Now, Claremont could enter this coin toss, but it's amount of points allowed. Well, if it's a tie at the top yeah. and they do co-lead champs, I think they're in. They're in. But, um, yeah, I think for, for Don Lugo, you want to be champs alone. Yeah. This is also, they haven't been 
great in a while. It's been a bit since this team. I don't even think they finished second. Oh, yeah. No, we, we were at a we were at a passing tournament with them earlier in the summer, and uh, I think they th they took everyone by surprise because they won it, and there was a lot of good schools that were there, mm. Claremont included, and uh, I don't think any of us saw Don Lugo winning it, but they did. And this team again is pass first, and it's shown this game. Well, actually, not really. They've done good on the pass, but they've been running the ball well too, especially with some of those quick. Halfback passes. Well, oh, hey, this is a time. This is a time of, of uh, time of the game where you have to just find some stuff that's working. And here we go. It's first and ten for Don Lugo. Claremont looking to get a stop here, trying to hold them to three or maybe even zero. You have three men up to the right of the screen, but they could do the handoff here, so you got to be careful. Looks like they have four men deep. They're not. They're trying to not let anything get over them. There's the snap, and there's the handoff to number 22. They're sticking with him, and he gets past the first group of tackles, but he cannot get the first down. He's about a yard short there. It'll be second and one for Don Lugo. Well, they're definitely playing off the ball. Claremont's definitely playing off the ball, off the ball there, and uh, that's allowing the running back to kind of have a few extra yards there after the, the line of scrimmage. And it's second and two, excuse me, for Don Lugo. As there's the snap, and there's the handoff again as he gets through the first gap, and he's still standing as he's running out to the sideline. Gets about three yards there, and it'll be first down for Don Lugo. And they're, they go very fast. They don't they do, do huddle. They don't huddle. They just kind of go quick, put in a play. play. Or the play calls in, and then they just run it. Looks like a... Penalty on the Conquistadors. And that's a holding on Don Lugo there. I didn't see the flag fly. And they'll be back a little bit now. Or I'm not exactly sure what's happening here. Oh, here they go. Now they're now they're starting to bring it back. <laughs> The referee looked like he was doing the moon dance, <laughs> moonwalk. And here we go. It's second and six, second and seven around there. And there's the snap, looking for the pass, and it's tipped down there. Great job by the Wolfpack defensive line, and it will be third and seven now for Don Lugo. And we saw their kicker earlier. He wasn't able to make that field goal to give them the seven-point lead. Yeah, that's coming back to bite them right now. And it indeed is coming back to bite them. You have to question if they want to kick it from here as well. But it's third and seven now. All right, here we go, third down. Three men on the side, Claremont moving to match with them. There's the snap. Here Number seven looking here for comes the pass. Blitz. Can't find anything, and he's running down the sideline, and he has an open lane, and he's still trying to go. And he gets the first down. And he's down at about the 13-yard line. And it'll be first down for Don Lugo. That's another Don Lugo! First down! And here they go, going fast. First and 10 for Don Lugo. Claremont trying to hold them, trying not to let them score a touchdown. There's the handoff to number 22. They have the edge, Claremont does, but he still runs, goes inside, and he will be a yard or two short of the first down. It'll be second and two here for Don Lugo, and Claremont is in desperate need now, trying to hold them. They held them here last time, but Don Lugo has discovered a new key to their game so far, and that's the run defense. Or excuse me, the run game, and it'll be second and two here. For the Wolfpack, there's the handoff, and he doesn't get anywhere. Tackle for a yard of loss there. It will be third and six. Well, it was a bad snap. It was a little high, but any time when a timing play like that happens, it makes it very difficult when something like that is off just a little bit. And it looks like it's third and seven here. Don Lugo is trying to take the lead back again, but it is not going great for them so far. It's 10 and seven here. And Don Lugo, Claremont leads. And that is the end of the third quarter of action. We are on to the fourth. Again, we'd like to thank our third quarter sponsor, TNG Roofing, Roofing Solar, and Rain Gutters. And now we'd like to thank our fourth quarter sponsor, the Coliseum, Sports Medicine and Orthopedics at Casa Colina. 
We'd also like to thank a couple more of our sponsors, Hendrix Pharmacy, the Claremont Village Pharmacy, All-Star Driver Education, and G of Hamill, number one, Claremont Sales and Listings. Broker Associates, call 909-621-0500. I'm going to uh, shout out three of our film crew that work up at the on top of the roof. Um, they're usually manning one of our three different cameras that we have up there. Uh, Ash Whitney, Devin Zarate, and Ella Millar, who are, again, student uh, film, film crew members for the football team that do a really good job for us, making sure that the images that you're getting on the live stream or even the cameras that are out for the coaches are also working in well in or working order, but they do a really good job for the Wolfpack Films. And again, we have we have a great crew of people here at Wolfpack Films. I mean, everybody puts in their effort to try and help make this broadcast go well, to help try and get film for the team go well. It's a big effort. and. I think we're going to do a club, aren't we? Like a, a school club or we were something? We are talking about that. You and uh, Rick Eduardo probably doing co-presidents or something? Yeah, we'll see. All right. We'll see. We can watch videos of, like, broadcasts of any sports, really. Yeah. Well, here we go. Fourth quarter. This is a game. And this, this is, is all you could ask for. The game. All right, here we go. It's third and seven here for Don Lugo. Claremont is looking to hold them again and try and keep them to a field goal. And there's the quick pass for number... 14, but he doesn't have much. He's tackled by number seven, Grant Walsh. Does not have the first down, and it will be fourth and eight for Don Lugo. You know, this side of the field, when you're in the red zone, things become very tight, very small. Your windows have to be, you know, are very, very small when you're trying to, to make a pass or even score. And this is where the Wolfpack has been really good this year on defense. And here we go, Don Lugo looking to tie this ball game up with a field goal. They missed their one earlier in the game. They're looking to make this a little different. Claremont looking to block this. And there's the kick. And Much the better. kick is good. And we have a tie game here at Don Lugo. 10-10. Hey. Who wants it? Who wants it, right? This is the time for both of these teams. Don Lugo looking for their first solo championship in San Antonio, and Claremont looking to punch their ticket to CIF. Make sure you stay tuned here on the Claremont High Network, as Claremont will be receiving the kickoff now. We have 11-17 left to go in this ball game, as Claremont is looking to take the lead here. They can take the lead with a field goal or a touchdown. Obviously, a touchdown would be preferred for them. Well, the last time the Wolfpack had the, had the ball, they really chewed up a lot of time. Yeah. And that's what you can really, at, at, at this stage in the game, I mean, if we were able to move the ball and have some kind of score with very little time left on the clock in the fourth quarter. And there's the kick, and Arion Kennebrew receives it at about the 10, and he's off, he's down the middle trying to find space. Just gets past the 20 and oh, is he's staying moving. up, and he's down at about the 29, 30 yard line, and that's where the Claremont offense will be coming out onto the field. Had a very successful drive passing last time. They got in a lot of situations where they got moved back a couple of yards, but they were able to bail themselves out of it with a couple of deep passes. They have to feel good about their overall game right now. I mean, offensively, defensively, to be where we're at right now, it's got to be. This is the best we've played as a team. All as year. a whole, all year. I would definitely agree. I mean, we've had games where they've scored more, and we've had games where they've, I wouldn't say held less. Yeah. But, I mean, I do agree. This is a very very full game for Claremont, as it's first and 10 here at the 29-yard line in their own territory. They're looking to take the lead here and burn clock while they're at it. Here we go. There's the handoff to the fullback down the middle. Gets a couple of yards there. Looks like a gain of one or two. Old faithful fullback dive. Looks like a gain of about two from the ref near our side. Gain of one from the ref near there. Looks like a gain of about two. And that'll be second and eight now for the Wolfpack. This is basically how they started all of their downs. Now, now you're starting to see the linebackers for the Conquistadors kind of drifting a little bit back. They're not 100% sure of the run now because of those throws that they've made on the last drive. And so here we go, we have 10.35 and the clock is ticking down now left in this ball game. It's second and eight for the Wolfpack as they're looking to get the lead in this game with not much time remaining. 
as here they go. There's the motion. The line moves with them. There's the snap. There's the fake handoff, and Bix throws it, and it's caught. It's Max Lieber again, and he has been playing a fantastic game so far. The booth is fired up, and this is Max Lieber's homecoming game. He has done phenomenal so far today. And he got rid of the ball just in time because there was a oh yeah, there was a man right on him. Right on him. Great throw there by Bix. You know, I know that's your blind side, but you still feel that pressure. Absolutely. So he was able to get it out and get it to his number one target so far today. And it's first and 10 at the 44 yard line in Claremont's territory. Just under 10 minutes now in this ball game as Claremont's looking to take the lead on this drive. It's first and 10 again. Here we go. Looks like the linebackers are gonna blitz. Trying to burn some more clock. Yep. There's the movement. There's the defensive line moving with him. There's the handoff to the running back, and he gets through the line, and he is still standing. I think he's and got looks a first like down. He might have just got the first down there, maybe a yard short, worst case. And it looks like they're giving him one yard short there. Yep. That was number 24, Gatsby, the freshman. Also having a great game. It's second and one here for the Wolfpack as they keep on burning the clock down. They've wasted about two minutes now. And they are moving as they enter Conquistador territory. And they're going to hold on the ball and as try to kill as, as much time as possible. They look over at the, the field judge to see him. He's the one that tells you you got five seconds left. And then once he starts, he puts his hand up in the air. Then the quarterback gets ready to snap the football. Or the back judge, I should and say. And there's the snap, and there's the fullback dive, and he got it. I don't know exactly which one of them got it, but he they got it no matter who it was. It will be first down, Claremont gain of about two there on the fullback dive. And that was LeBay, number 32. First and 10 for the Wolfpack. And looks like number 68 is limping a little bit. That's Brennan. Claremont? Yes. But it's first down for the Wolfpack here. In Conquistador territory. At the 44 yard line, Conquistador territory. There's the handoff to Gatsby as he tries to move on to the outside and he gets a couple there. Looks like he got one or two. It'll be second and eight for the Wolf Pack. Or it looks like second and nine for the Wolf Pack. Yeah, he, uh, you never know when he hits that edge. He can, he, he's got he can the speed it. to take it, yeah. And I'm sure that Don Lugo is being very careful of that. So the more they watch him, the more it opens up the middle of the field and a, and a possible play action. And it's second and nine for your Wolfpack as they're in enemy territory at the 43 yard line. You're in no man's land right now, but they're looking to get out of it. There's the snap and there's the handoff and he gets a couple of yards there. Looks like he got about two. It'll be second and set, or it'll be third and seven here. That was Garcia. Looks like there's a player down. Yeah, it looked like a big shoulder right in yeah, the right in I the chest area that the uh, linebacker really hit him there. Yeah, that's what I saw too. I was, I thought I saw maybe a little bit of helmet contact. I thought maybe. Yeah, that's what I thought too. Could have seen a targeting call there, but there will be an injury timeout now on the field. Claremont and Don Lugo teams discussing, giving him a little bit of water while we have that. And yeah, it looks like he's, he's limping a little bit, so it wasn't like it must have been a leg injury. And that's Garcia. 
five, and he's had a good game so far. We've called his name a couple of times. He's been maybe there. I'd probably say they're running back two. And here we go. It's third and eight here for the Wolfpack. They've been in a lot of these third and a little long situations, and they've been able to get them so far. We'll see if they can do it again. Out here at Don Lugo. Can they pass it one more time? Go to the well one more time. Trying to get him to jump there. There's the snap. There's the handoff to Gatsby, and he gets a couple there, but is not able to get the first down. Just past the 40-yard line is there. Looks like he's about three yards short, three or four. Well, here's a situation where do you punt it and pin him deep, even though they do have a strong offense obviously a good they move the ball watch the ball Got some loud fans here and what does coach anthony heil decide to do here i'll tell you what he decides to do get them off sides that's what he's saying right yeah. now fourth During and the fourth five. And five all you need is that offsides call and you'll get it but if not i could see a little bit of play action here and bix does have some speed he played receiver last year on jv so we could even see him roll out of the pocket if he doesn't see anything on the play action Well, they're spending a lot of time, and now it looks like we are in a timeout. And just under six minutes left to go here in the fourth quarter of action. We'd like to thank a couple more of our sponsors. Growth Family Alumni wishing the Wolfpack a successful season. Go Max. Leon Family Alumni wishing Luke LeBay an awesome season. Pomona Valley Medical Center, sports medicine and athletic rehabilitation, athletic care from injury through return to play. And again, our fourth quarter sponsor, the Coliseum, sports medicine and orthopedics at Casa Colina. And then our last group that I'm going to mention today for our film crew is uh, actually a crew that wasn't able to be here today because of Oktoberfest. They're doing a lot of uh, theater and Oktoberfest combined. Um, Noah Flowers, Peyton Flowers, and Elijah Limon who have been really just instrumental in uh, teaching us a lot about audio, uh, the technical side of uh, bringing our voices to you. Um, uh, but Peyton and Noah are both seniors and they've been here for three years and so they're just really great, great group of kids. And here we go. It's fourth down here for the Claremont as they're looking to try and keep this drive alive. There's the snap and it's too fast for Bix. And he is brought back. He's tackled deep down. Looks like he wasn't ready for it. It looks like taking Bix a little bit to get off two, and Don Lugo will be taking the ball right past the 50-yard line. And a shift of momentum here. Well, Under six minutes to go, and Don Lugo will be getting the ball back, looking to take the lead. As bad as that is in terms of a turnover and just like a mental mistake, the Wolfpack really defensively just got to be like, look, we, we've been here. We've, we, let's focus. We're tied right now. We need to really just stop Don Lugo from going anywhere here. And we've seen two interceptions so far for the Wolfpack and one turnover on downs. We'll see if they can get another turnover here. It's first and 10, they're at the 50 yard line. Don Lugo looking to take the lead here. Their passing game has not been in the level that they're used to all season. And there's the pass to number 11 on the side and he's trying to get by him. And looks I mean, like he got about six yards there. Took a couple of Wolfpack defenders to get him down there. That was number 11, Joshua Morales, the sophomore. Second of five here now. We've been seeing a lot of short passes and runs for Don Lugo. Yeah, this might be a run. And there's the snap, and there's the fake run there and short pass number 14. And I thought he stepped out a little bit before there, but looks like they're going to give it to him. Don Lugo is moving down the field at the... 36 yard line now in Claremont territory. It's first and 10 now. Claremont's defense is looking at stop you here. Cowbell's going. They had the Cowbell game earlier this year versus Chino. They lost that one. And there's the snap. 
And there he is looking to throw it to number 14 immediately. His number one guy, and you see it. He had one man in mind on that play, and it was him. And it's another first down for Don Lugo. And we are just under five minutes here. First down! We're just under five minutes here at Don Lugo. He had a flag down. Flag on the play. He I think got that's coming back. the touchdown, but that should be coming back. I don't see much celebration on the Lugo sideline. No, they know it's a, it's a penalty on them. We'll wait to see what the call's on. Would have been a touchdown if not for the play being, looks like it will be being brought back. They're trying to say touchdown here on the Lugo sideline. We'll see if that's the call they go for. It's never good when the referees sit there and talk for like a minute when there's all this flat, all the flags are on the ground here. And it looks like they're talking. And they call it on the Wolfpack and that is a touchdown for Don Lugo as they went straight down the field to score there. I'm not fully sure what the flag was on. Yeah, that, that, that call that he tapped his shoulder, that's not on the manual, so I don't know what that was. But needless to say, it was on Claremont. And here we go, they're looking for the extra point now, but they moved down so fast, there's still about five minutes left to go in this game. So Claremont can definitely mount a final drive to try and tie it up. As there's the kick, and the kick is good. And as Claremont now trails 17 to 10 here, the momentum just got shifted here at Don Lugo. And Claremont is looking to keep their season alive here with a touchdown drive. Well, they've proven that they're able to score a touchdown. They're able to move the ball. This defense of Don Lugo is definitely susceptible. They've overperformed a lot of expectations yeah. today. So, in, in the Wolfpack's eyes, you have to believe that we can go down and score and tie this up. And it looks like, it looks like they enforced the penalty on the kickoff there. We'll see what Claremont can do with 4.49 left to go in this ball game. Season on the line, like I just said. the kickoff. Oh, little pooch kick. They're trying to squib kick it. And a little bit confused exactly what they're calling it. It was offsides. Offsides. Ooh, and that's tough. They would have recovered that. That was a good idea. So they'll re-kick. They'll re-kick. And Claremont, that fact of surprise is now gone. And there they go, moving back five. How would a run back be great right now, huh? Oh, it would be very special. 4.49 left to go as they redo the kick here. Do it again. So this and is going to give. There we go. It's recovered by Claremont, and they get it. It's so good, good field, field position. position. Yep. I'm not going to lie. I'm a little bit confused exactly why you go for it again. I thought the I thought the surprise well, was a good call, but they tried the opposite side of the field and thought maybe they would, you know, that would be enough of a surprise. But Wolfpack was ready for it. And Claremont gets the ball at their own 47-yard line here. It looks closer to the 48. 
And here we go, Claremont's looking to tie this ball game up with 4.46 left to go. Yeah, I like the way they came out of the huddle there. Look at the linebacker, it looks like the they're blitzing. There's the handoff to number 24, Gatsby, as he's moving out to the edge, and he's still standing, and he gets the first down. That's Gatsby with the first down run, and there's a man down in the backfield. That Bix? Can't tell. Yeah, this is a time of the game where a lot of the cramps begin to happen. But he's still down there. We didn't exactly see what happened. See Claremont players taking a knee. Well, with 4.38 left, you've just got a first down. This is going to be moving the ball vital to get it into the red zone and, and get a few shots of the, at the touchdown. Still down here. We have the Lugo staff coming on to help too. And not much talking going on right now. No, when these kind of things happen, I mean, everybody pretty much is respectful of crowds. They're all fired up with the last game and possible league championship. But when something like this happens, I think everybody hopes for the best. And now we have the Lugo head coach coming over too. Still don't have 100% confirmation on who's down. Here they go, they're helping them up. And that's number 50, Yaka Boyraz, the sophomore. You can see he doesn't have much pressure on that right leg. And it's first down for the Wolfpack. I give a shout out to all the people on the chat all the subscribers who are watching the game and well, well, chatting well, along, well, watching from well, wherever you are. And here we go, it's first and 10 for the Wolfpack now. In Conquistador's territory now, and there's the fullback dive up the middle. Oh, he's still up. He's still moving and was able to push that into a gain of about one, maybe two. Is that the tush push that everyone <laughs> keeps talking about? And it looks like they're giving him about one yard there. Let's go, defense! It'll be second and nine here, as we've just gone under four minutes left to go in this ball game. And here we go. The season is on the line for the Wolfpack now. All right, here we go. Second and nine. There's the motion, there's the snap, there's the handoff to Gatsby as he gets through the first line and he tries to bounce off him and he's still up. And we'll see where they mark him down at. What a tough kid, Looks man. like he's down at about the 39 yard, should be third and two for the Wolfpack now. Or third and three around there. And like you said, he is a tough kid. As, he's, as the season has gone on, he's just getting more comfortable back there with the ball. It's good to see. And here we go. It's the biggest third down of the season for the Wolfpack. Third down and three. We just hit three minutes left to go in this ball game. It's loud at Lugo. There's the handoff to Gatsby, and he has nowhere to go, and he's tackled in the backfield. Loss of about two yards there. It'll be second and five, or sorry, fourth and five for the Wolfpack. And here it is. It's the final. Well, it looked like it was, again, you know, we talked about timing earlier, and it looked like something was wrong with that handoff. And uh, I don't know if it was the exchange or when he got the ball from the center, but it was definitely something that affected the overall timing of that play. And 
it's loud here at Don Lugo High School. If Don Lugo gets the stop, this game is most likely over. If Claremont gets the fourth down conversion, their season stays alive. There's the snap. You got a flag, flag on. on the field. We'll see who they call it on. That's usually an offensive foe when they throw it that early. That's a false start. False start. You're going to decline that. I don't know if they have enough timeouts to get the ball back one more time. Yeah, that's going to be tough. I mean, we've I think we've used two or maybe all of them already. I can't tell the scoreboard over here is there's so much going, going on on yeah. that scoreboard that I can't tell what number is what. And we'll see if Wait, that make sense. can get the back one more time. That's what they're that's what they're saying now to get the ball back. Yeah, right? If it calls a false start, the play's dead. Right? Exactly. And We'll see what's going on. They're discussing it. Looks like it. Coach Hiles asking a question about this clock. We'll see what they. And what does he call it? Did not and he do this? Are they? He did. He did this. He did false start. That was his call. And looks like I'm a little confused exactly what's going on, but. Here it is, and they're just going to try and hand it off, and just Hold one more ball, first ball, down, ball. and we'll end this game. Hold the ball! And Get the team the yard, about one yard lost there as the clock's I mean, ticking down. We've just got under two minutes now. They're really risking him. I don't know why they didn't just go take a knee and then punt it out with very little left on the clock. Yeah. I mean, a, a turnover here would just be disastrous. And lots of stomping here as Lugo's looking to get their first league title since joining San Antonio League. And Claremont is looking to keep their hopes alive. There's the snap, it's a little high. And there's the pass, number 14. Tries to go around the play there. And he stayed in bounds. Stays in bounds. Come on, throw the ball. Oh, in bounds. So the clock is going to keep on running. And I think that should be it. One more knee, and I believe this ball game should be over. Yeah. Well, you know what? And the Wolfpack the played a great game. I mean, they've got those young men that are out there on the field right now have got to be proud of themselves for the effort that they put in today. The season wasn't what they wanted, uh, but to end it like this with a gutsy effort like this is something that I think is very, very hopeful for their future. And here they get up in winning position, and with a knee here, the game will be over. And before the time runs out, I also want to say uh, thank you to you for being uh, a good play-by-play uh, uh, -play guy. And also Ian DeHaro, who's also our uh, film crew member. And as they come out for it, Don Lugo is your San Antonio League champion. Going 3-0 and in league. And having a great end to the season, but for the Claremont, this season ends in heartbreak. They were just there, but it's over. And next year will be a big year for this Wolfpack team. That JV, again, just came off of a really good year. And obviously this year didn't go how a lot of people wanted it to go. And next year, let's be honest with ourselves, it's going to be a different looking team, especially in the coaching staff. Yeah, absolutely, for sure. Yeah, we, that's all up in the air, so we don't know what's going to happen here. We do know that the effort that these boys play today, like I said, this is going to be something that they could carry on with them to be proud of, even though the season was not as they wanted it. But the effort today was just beautiful to see. And over, and as the season goes, I mean, they're all, as the off season goes, they're only going to get stronger. They're only going to get better. 
there's going to be more guys coming up to the varsity level next year. Uh, to be honest with you, at some points in this year, the future didn't look bright for the Wolfpack. Yeah. But yeah. now I feel that this team has a lot of potential going into next year. Yeah, and absolutely. Yeah, there's, uh, like I said, the, the coaching staff situation is going to be something that we're going to have to, like, overcome and uh, try to figure out who is going to be the next person to lead these young men for another season of Wolfpack football. And thank you all so much for tuning in. Claremont tried their hardest but just couldn't come out with it. Signing off for one final time this year, I'm Luke Roy. I'm Coach Frank Ramirez. And that was your Wolfpack High School Football on the Claremont High Network.